Hi, Jackie. <laughs> Jackie, where's Jackie? Is Jackie on, on here? Facebook. Jackie's on Facebook. Facebook. There she is. All right, guys, we should be live. I'm getting everything else ready to make sure things going all good. Um, if you're watching us on Facebook, we may be a little delayed. We're trying to get that uh, sorted out. I don't know what the deal is. Don't know how that happens. Nothing I can try to do. I don't know. It may be a programming thing. We have four people watching us. Sweet. Yeah. Hooray. Right. So it should be good. If you're watching us on Twitch, say something in the chat channel so we know that you're there, guys. We should be back. Wow. Kind of weird. Um, so we should be good on there. I, John, you're going to be watching Facebook just in case something goes wrong? Of course not. Of course not. Thank you. Um, Twitch is some. Yeah. Some weird stuff going on with it. Welcome to right. that chat room. Got it all set. Yeah, it looks, it looks, looks like we're fuzzy. Good. Yeah, it may take a minute. Yeah, it does. Yeah. All yeah. right, I we are so back. Long. And we got a new splash screen. Yay! Yay. Thanks to Kathy. Thanks for tacos, yes. <laughs> tacos sound good. I mean, I had pizza, so I don't need tacos, but they still sound good. <laughs> Kathy decided to make us a new cool background, so <laughs> when we chat together, we have everything. Um, so this is episode 51. Uh, we're going to be yeah. talking about uh, Age of Sigmar kind of review. And we will be talking about um, how to make time for your hobbying. Because uh, in our busy world today, that's kind of what you got to do. So we're going to be doing that. So let's start with our good old tradition. Kathy, what you drinking? I have uh, a little coffee to finish up. I have some rum and coke. And I have... Uh, some Earl Grey tea. Hot. Hot, hot? I'm really surprised that there's rum and coke there. That just kind of flabbergasts me. What? <laughs> I know. I know. It's Shocking. Flabbergasts. John, what you got to drink today? Uh, right now, I might have to run to grab something else. I just finished my sweet tea, so all I have is a shot of Bird Dog Apple Whiskey. Ooh. Mm. Let's see. I... I'm drinking some Maker's Mark. I needed to stay off. I had to take some uh, medication this morning, so I figured I'd take something light and easy instead of something hard. So I'm going to go with Maker's Mark today. <laughs> I think you're doing that wrong. Yeah, because... Yeah. So, um, do we need to do any shout-outs to anybody? Everybody okay? Anybody need anything? I, there were no major deaths that i know aware of thank mm -hmm. god well let's do a shout out to all of our listeners on whether you watch us on twitch facebook live soundcloud itunes wherever all of our patron subscribers let's give a cheer up to them because they're the one that makes this happen yes thanks guys cheers thank you cheers hmm Nice. That's good. That's really, really good. Um, we got to do a little bit of talking. We were kind of we were talking about it before we went to um, the live episode. In the pre-ramble, you can hear a bunch of us. We talked about the Age of Sigmar um, Champions game. We did a pretty good review of that and had a di good discussion on it with Kathy and I. Um, yep. We are also talking about things we're going to be doing. Um Guys, we uh, we are going to be changing up the patron rewards for everybody. We're going to be streamlining it, make it a little bit cooler, uh, a little bit more fun. Um, we're kind of working out the details on that, so be on the lookout. So if you're a patron subscriber, you mean everything to us. Um, you're the one that keep us going uh, monetarily. That helps us out more than you know. Yep. Um, it's amazing that uh, that that's happened. Um, so just be on the lookout for that. Um, we got anything, any episodes coming out this week? John, you got Might anything? I get, uh, minis and movies, depends on how my time goes. Okay. I do, with the promotion, lose one hour after work, because I gotta work normal hours, not early hours, but it's all good. Okay. Um, I will uh, try to record a rolling dice for our Age of Sigmar. 
because I promised I would do that, and I just need to get a little bit better on that. And hey, Solasar, thanks for joining us, buddy. Um, of course, Kathy, you're going to be painting this Monday and Thursday, correct? Yes, I am. Tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. to noon central, and Thursday morning, 10 a.m. to noon central. And I'll be painting on Wednesday. Uh, there should be a new Dawn of Harbinger coming out, episode 14. If you haven't caught up on that, make sure you catch up, because episode 12 was an amazing episode. Episode 13, I'm going to say that is the closest episode that we've had that's been very much a Star Wars movie. Um, it was so spot on, it wasn't even funny. Um, hey, Lynn! Thank you for joining us. See you on Facebook up there. Yep. Um, what else? Um, I'm going to convention this weekend, but I will be back enough time to do our podcast, so no big deal. Uh, you have it for everyone to know. There will be no sewer bear for about a month. We didn't play this week because people with crazy schedules and Norrin taking a break. And then the next week I will be out of town. So, and I'm a little to... bit before you get your next uh, sewer bear fix. Yeah, I'm trying to line up a special guest for when you're out of town. And as uh, soon as I get that, we will announce it. It'll be hopefully this person can because it'd be kind of cool. So, slow so one. Welcome. Welcome, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and... Uh, oh, Congo, you're not making War Machine Weekend? What? Aw. Dang it. I mean, I'm not going to be... Even I'm going. Though. But <laughs> Congo's going to be at uh, ReaperCon and Adepticon, I think. Don't, we're not allowed to talk about Adepticon. Because you won't be there? Because I can't go. <laughs> oh, I'll be talking about Adepticon yes. all the time. I'm sorry, my friend. I'll be honest, it's on my list. Thing, like, my reality of what I can do in a, in a year has kind of changed. Uh, we'll have to see uh, how things play out. Let's go get to the paint cam, and I'll start working on this. I want to see how this is, because this is part white. Ooh, look how white that is. That's really bright. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I can tell from here. Lord. There is a, quite a bit of uh, contrast there. Yeah. Uh, it is King Theoden on his steed. Um, let me see if I can bring that in a little bit closer. And get that up. And let me get it. Um, this is from the new Lord of the Rings. Rings. I <coughs> have that on my schedule for a review today. Oh, well. Oh. No, I didn't think about it. Probably should have had some time yesterday. I, uh, I dug out the uh, the three soundtracks of the three movies so that Jim and I can listen to them because we also got the Battle for Pelennor Field uh, box set this week in addition to the, the just a day before that the uh, Song of Fire and Ice box mm -hmm. uh, arrived so we will be busy and I think that's what we're going to be bringing to the game store and working on while we're hobbying at the game store on Tuesday before I play my uh, Champions games. So, oh. yay! Yay! And right. the, the Kill Team stuff that will soon be here. I mean, on top of all of a sudden, I have this influx of games, and I have a game store at which to play them. Yeah. So, I mean, You'll have more Kill exciting. Team stuff in a week or so. Like I said, just got to get that mailed out to you so you can have yeah. all the... Uh, Geller Pox, whatever they're called. Yep, the I'm all stuff. sorts of excited because when we were doing our little, uh, our my friends and I were doing a painting hangout on Wednesday night, and uh, one of my friends was painting her Geller Pox, and she was sending me pictures of them, you know, so I could just get close up uh, shots of what they looked like, and yeah, I was. They're super cool. I mean, I prefer for these guys, but that's sort of like my my 40k manifesto is. If it'll play with my knights, then I will consider it. If it will not play with my knights, out the door. <laughs> yeah, well, those are some really cool models, too, and they oh, have absolutely. a dog, so, you know, how could you say no? Yeah, to Axe he's the goodest dog ever. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to get this. I, I need to do a cleanup where I did the overspray, which is okay, because I got to use my new Sotar, and I was, like, super impressed with it. Love that thing. Overspray um, happens. Hey, Ronald, thanks for joining us. Um, but it was really good. Um, so what do you want to, let, let's, let's go with the one that we're kind of, I'm actually kind of interested in and I want to hear John's view since he was so down on it for so long and been looking at the rules for so long. What did you think about Age of Sigmar? 
Uh, Age of Sigmar. Well, I mean, so the real problem is every time everyone tried to sell it to me, like, well, it's fun. So let me give you some advice to everyone out there. If you are trying to sell a game to somebody, don't say it's fun. It's a game. If it's, it's a... not fun, it's not a fucking game anymore. <laughs> <laughs> then it's a chore. Yeah. Exactly. So that's not a selling point. You gotta try neither, it. Neither is our amazing, awesome game. When you start using those hyperbolic expressions to market yeah. your game, you're failing. Yeah. So it, it's it's a hard it's hard to to quantify. It was enjoyable to play. Um, as everyone knows, my big problem is the the double turn. I'll talk about that because I can give a full you know game synopsis since we had. Uh, Um, since we had a, uh, you have, uh, Mark, my brains. Yeah. I just saw that pop up on my phone, not on my yeah. thing. Hey, Mark, this is the King Theoden from the Battle of Pelennor field that GW Excellent. just brought up. Cool. So, uh, join us on yeah, Facebook so we, live or Twitch, Mark, and you can come and join us. Yeah. Jump in the chat room. Easier to see your messages. They don't, yeah. they don't, they don't distract me now. Yeah. In any case, the double uh, turn. So, you know, yeah, the double turn I'm not a big fan of, but we played the majority of a game. Uh, myself and Chris, we both have Stormcast, um, which is interesting also because locally, if everyone goes the way I think they will with armies, in the one group, we only have Chaos, Stormcast, and Death. Huh. Because we've got a corn guy, we've got a guy who has Nurgle and Death, another guy who wants to get Night Haunts, so he'll have Death, and then myself and Chris have Stormcast. And then if we add in Banyan, if he decides to play, he would look at death stuff. And if uh, uh, PD comes out, the guy I got my Stormcast from, he has death also. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. I don't think that'll actually be a problem, actually, because Stormcast actually does okay against those things. It'll actually mean their abilities are more useful, but in any way, case. Yep. Um, so let's go through in order. I got a bunch of models from PD real cheap. Uh, and he's like, you don't have to pay right now because I trust you. I just want to make sure you're, you're going to have something to play with and I'll have more people to play against. Pretty much a standard. And locally, everyone knows if you get a PD deal, you're getting a hell of a deal. <laughs> PD knows how to deal. He's a good dude. So I get all the models, take them home, and uh, I had the app because it was free. So I started looking around at the app. He's got all the, the war scrolls too. And then uh, I started talking to like, uh, my, my uh, opponent, Chris, uh, one of the guys I played a lot of stuff mentioned the army builder called Azure, mm -hmm. which is part of the app. It is subscription only. You do have to pay for it monthly. But? But it's 99 cents. Yes. I mean, it updates stuff pretty well. I found a couple things where it probably could have been updated a little better, but it's 99 cents a month. It's negligible. But you don't, it's not just an army builder for 99 cents a month, though. No, no, it is. It does have all free content in it. You yes. can download the basic rule book. Uh, the rules are in there, just the rules function. Um, if you buy your books digitally through it, it'll also update all the stuff from that book into your army builder and everything, your quick reference. And to their credit, GW has finally gotten their ebooks down to a price where it's a, it's a hard decision now. Because I'm a big love the feel of a book in my hand. Even you know, like this, something small like this, like I got a book I can flip through and look at and marvel over. E hey, aren't Alexander like Helt. Welcome. Sorry to interrupt, John. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> I guess I had and, a paper. Uh, their ebooks are, are half price now. Physical copies, 40. The, uh, e the, uh, the ebook's 20 bucks. It's. It's a hard sell. I'm not even sure yet, you know? But it adds into the app so you can start looking at all the, you know, battalions and formations and stuff. But um, you get to see the rules of the models without having to buy, correct. like, army packs. Correct. Yeah, you don't have to buy an army pack. You've got all the basic rules for all the models are available. Like, I was... Uh, Bane and I were sitting down after a movie and chatting, and I'm sort of, like, reading off some rules and giving my idea what they're like for older army, because he's an old-school fantasy guy like me. Yeah. Hey, Jeff Wallach. Welcome. Oh, shut down. <laughs> uh, so, in any case, I got that together. I started poking around, built an army on there. It did take a little figuring out because 
some of the rules are not stated on cards, which is a big down. So I was looking like, I know this is a legal army, Peter was making it, but I don't know how it's a legal army, because I only have sequiturs, I don't have any of the other troop choices. But it turns out, if you have a certain general, your sequiturs become battle line, as they call it. Yes. So, but that took a little getting used to. Yeah, it did take a little bit, uh, because it it goes off of your battalions. Because if you pick a certain battalion, you got to make sure you take all the other stuff that goes along with it. So you and none of that's get... available for free unless you have none of that's available for free in the in in the Iron Builder. You got to have the book or just leave them out. Yeah. So I had to make sure I leave them out, and then someone told me like, "Okay, look." You know, Chris told me like, "If you take this guy as your leader, your secretaries are troops or are battle lines." I'm like, "Okay, cool." So I did that, built the whole army. Uh, now, of course, he's helped me thinking I've just got one unit of secretaries because he thinks I just got the the starter box, not you know, two thousand points of army. Um. So we did that. We set up. We we rolled a scenario. We played with not not in any of the realms because he didn't want to throw all that at me, and I thought that was a good idea. I'm not yeah, which is understandable. Going crazy, although I do after a quick look at the realm rules, I do like them. I think that's where a lot of the more interesting fun stuff fun stuff's going to show up. Yeah, <laughs> the, the more, more interesting rules interactions yeah. where you get a little more variety. Suddenly, your wizard, I can only cast X. Well, no, you've got this other spell too because of the realm we're in. Yep. So those are going to be cool stuff. And those guys didn't have a ru- basic rule book, so now I have a basic rule book so they can look through it and use that content. Uh, so we ended up with a scenario that is three flags. It is literally three flags, 18 inches, 18 inches, 18 inches, because it's a big board. And then only heroes can take them, and then you can only take them from a hero and still score them if you kill the hero with another hero. Otherwise, you kill the hero, and then next turn you get to take it. Um, Slave 1D, didn't he ask, is it more of a skirmish now that the block armies? It is more skirmish. You do have formations, as in you have to stay within one inch of another model that's in your unit or there's problems. Um, that is part of it, but it is, you don't like have to... Have problems. Removing models wholesale is a little more than problems, sir. Correct. Which, that was something I had to learn. I yeah. had to learn about that because, you know, you can't just take a model from the middle because then the other half of that unit is dead. Yep. You really got to look at that. I, I almost had a problem with that. I just, you know, just changed which models I was taking. It wasn't the ones I really wanted, wanted to take, yeah. but, you know, you did what you had to. Yep. So in any case, we play. Uh, he gets done deploying first because he's got some bigger blocks of units and I have more heroes because it's just what was built. And... The end all of it is that he had a bad role for his uh, dude on Griff Charger to ride the winds etheric and didn't end up getting close enough to the objective. <laughs> he ended up like an inch and change out of what he needed to be. So in pure taunting fashion, I did the same thing with my same model and totally got in there. And then I had, uh, since I've read the rules, unlike those guys who don't think I read the rules... I had one of my other characters, a knight, uh, quest, I think it is, run over and uh, I used a command point to make his run roll a six automatically, yep. and he took another objective. So the way the objective score is, in this scenario, you score one point for holding them one turn. The second turn you hold them, you score two points each, and then three points, and then four points, and at that point you probably won the goddamn game. So at the end of the first turn, I'm going second. I score two points. Pretty good. Um, the the, the Griff Hounds, which I had and he's never seen before, you know, charge in, do almost nothing to his paladins, but then back off because they're allowed to do that. And then, uh, you know, stand between my paladins and his paladins, which is great. He's not got a screen, and he doesn't have enough shooting to get rid of them. I don't have shooting there. And it sort of went like that, where basically I I defeated him through superior tactics. Um, Plus a little bit of better, I don't know, I don't want to say better dice rolls, because he had some amazing save rolls, and didn't really do poorly overall, but a little better choice of spells. Like, he's got this combos, that is what he does. Excuse me, he's like, I buff this unit, I buff this unit, I buff this unit, that's what I do. I'm like, no, this guy's holding an objective. I give him Mystic Shield so he can reroll ones to save, and 
he does a spell where he heals himself, so he's back at full wounds. You know, I was actually thinking about what I was doing, not just... Not just doing. You know, not reading from a script. Oh, thank you for the sub, Slave 1D. Whoa! Thank you. That's amazing. Yeah, thanks. We've got so, a, uh, so anybody, we're not doing sound effects while we do the podcast anymore. That way it doesn't yeah. mess up our recording. So if, don't think that we didn't, we don't see it. We just kind of turned them off while we record the podcast for our, yeah. our listeners. Yeah, it might be a little different on the painting streams. It's a little easier to have stuff. But yeah. so we, we do that. And, uh, you know, I have a bunch of dudes come in there and help him. And he has this giant unit of sequiturs of like 20 men running around. But there's a building, so they can't get to uh, my guy holding the objective. And I got just enough dudes to keep him in place. Uh, so turn two comes, and he's still trying to kill him and, and doesn't. He can't. He's four inches away. He's like, I'm not going to move. I'm just going to stay where I am. And he rolls threes for charging twice, uh. which was hilarious. I'm like, you should have stopped just outside of three. You would have been able to charge. Yeah. I mean, it, it ended up bringing the guy into combat anyways because where he had to go with his dudes. Uh. You know, the next turn, like, I charged in, I brought dudes into combat. So they ended up getting there, but just meant more dudes for me to kill. And uh, so, end of second turn, I go up 6-0, because I'm still holding both objectives. And this is where the double turn comes in. I get the double turn. Ooh. And, I mean, at that point, he just shook. He had to take, he had to get ready to go to work anyways, because they called him in late. But at that point... I was going to have a, a small unit of sequiturs hit his bolt thrower, so my other knight was going to be totally safe holding an objective. He'd have no way of getting anyone over there to kill it because I'm like got the center clogged up with my larger unit of sequiturs, and he wasn't. He probably wasn't gonna be able to kill my dude. He couldn't bring enough to bear because with the having the second turn, he could bring a bear. Sort of, you know, he couldn't bring a bear either. Damn, that sucks. I would be able to pin his other unit in place with my units. You know, sort of have him one unit here, then another one behind it, so that he can't just go. And, uh, yeah, so pretty much won that out of hand. Um, as I say, I'm keeping track of double turns because I'm not a big fan, and I'm still not a big fan because it took what, what in a standard turn, procedure would be like not a great chance, but he had a chance and just took it away from him. He had no chance at that point. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of iffy on that, too. Like I said, I've, I've played a few games. And I've gone to a tournament uh, and played in a tournament because that's what I was very concerned about was playing in a tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, 40K tournaments are... If you haven't been to one, guys, don't. Yeah, so you... 40K is... It's hardcore. Yeah. It's um, Rochambeau. Yeah. It's Rochambeau with spiked boots. <laughs> um, but uh, I had a lot of fun. Um... The jank is there. There's nothing you can say about it. The jank is in There's the game. There's jank in every game. It's but everybody has the every jank. Yeah. yeah. Everybody has the jank, though. That's, that's what I, I thought was interesting was, I'm like, yeah, I can do this. And they're like, oh, shit. And then all of a sudden, he does something. I went, oh, shit. So it was like back and forth, you know, jank. Yeah. So I, I like the combos. The They build in some combos. Like, these guys work with this and this. But it's not so... I don't want to disparage any game. It's not so, you know, specific that you have to take the certain things. Because, like, I see the way he plays. Like, I put Lantern on this unit of sequiturs, and I buff this and this. And I'm like, well, no, no, no. The sequiturs aren't going to get in combat right now. I'm going to put it on this unit of paladins over here who could actually use the save more right now because they got nothing. They don't have shields or nothing. They, they could use some bonus. And it, there's stuff you can do it outside of, you know, the, the, the cookie cutter, if you will, or the, the script. Uh, there's a lot of potential there for some interesting synergy and combos. Yep. Um, movement is important. Not as important as it was in Fantasy. I mean, Fantasy, the game was won and lost in the movement phase. If you don't believe that, then you were playing a different game than I was. <laughs> you win or lost there. And this game is not quite the same, but it can be. But it is obviously meant to be beer and pretzels. Just throw your models and have a good time. The streamlined, you know hit and wound stuff isn't really a detriment. It's a lot easier for the basic person. Um, I think uh, I'm still left with the double turns being a bit much. It could be a hell of a negative play experience if it does poorly on you. Um, 
they really didn't think about their army builder. It's not super intuitive to use all the functions of it. It's not bad. And for 99 cents a month, it is perfectly serviceable. Hmm. But that, and they need to work on, like I said, some of those abilities. Like, you know, you should know that if you have dude on Griff Charger, then he makes your sequiturs core. You should know that. It shouldn't be a have to have another book to know that. That's a model ability that should be straight up there. Though, granted, apparently it's only a model ability in certain formations or armies, but that's sort of the part they need to work on that whole everything working together. Having a book and, you know, physical book and an ebook, you need to find a way to, to, to get those combined so that, like, the physical book has something you can. Because they're all sealed when you get them, they're all plastic wrapped. Yeah. Just have a page in there where you scan it in your thing, app, and maybe pay a $5 fee for all the extra work they have to do. And then you get the book content in the app in addition to physical. I would pay five extra bucks for that. Um, so I'm intrigued enough. I'll continue playing it. I'm not going to put a lot of money into it. And at this point, I don't have to because I have a 2,000 point army. I just need to get a couple more units of core dudes so I can expand out and maybe get that Stormcast book so I can look at everything. Yeah. But uh, I'm intrigued. This seems interesting. It's uh, different enough from 40k, but it's, they keep them close enough that they're learning from both games and applying them to the next game in line. So whereas like 40k, you know, Age of Sigmar came out, then 40k came out, and they knew all the problems they had with Age of Sigmar, and they fixed that in 40k. They had power level, they had points immediately, they did all this other stuff. And then Age of Sigmar comes back out, and they're like, well, we want to do command points, but we see how 40k has become absolutely fuck nuts crazy on command points. Yeah, which that's another old ball of wax that's going to get changed. Yeah, certainly, eventually. So, they took and put command points in Age of Sigmar, but they work a lot better. They work a lot more like Kill Team. Uh, but both those two both work very similarly, and that's cool. Um, so, I like how they're, they're keeping the games close enough that they can learn from each other. And they can make... They, they basically get extra testing by, by testing out ideas in both games. Like, what's it like, 40k? Nah, it didn't work as well as 40k. Let's try something different here. And the way they're committed to FAQs and big FAQs and, and updating stuff, I mean, that's part of GW being in a good spot and doing the right thing, but it carries over to their games. Mm-hmm. So I would say it's, uh, I do not like it more than 40k. It's a good change of pace from 40k. Um, I don't know if I like it more than War Machine. It is definitely has the bonus of being significantly easier in all aspects than War Machine. No, one hundred percent. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Yeah, yeah. The and rules are much easier. Yeah, rules are much easier. The snares are easier, cleaner, and even seem less. How should I put it? Steamrollers become very arbitrary, I think. It's a whole other discussion, but it just seems sort of arbitrary, all the stuff in it. They keep them more, you know, basic. Like, we're fighting over points in the battlefield. Are they points of energy? Who cares? You, they're simple enough that you can use your imagination. You know, heroes have to hold. And, and they do that. They actually have it. Like, it was called, every scenario is called, like, you know, your domain of death or something like that. <laughs> and they have some background for it in there, which is cool. They give you an idea of the fluff behind what you're doing, which a little bit of fluff goes a long way in someone's mind. Yeah. Like I said, intriguing enough, I do not regret getting these guys. So again, they were cheap. Uh, I do not necessarily discount the idea of adding some to them. Um, it's currently going to be in my top five games, but, you know, not cresting the, the top couple spots yet. We'll see how with more play it might get better. It might get worse. There's a lot of stuff that seems completely batshit crazy. But I know when you start playing, it may not look that bad. All right. I, I'm going to go with you too on that because, you know, I guess if I played it, I will be recording, you know, what happened on my tournament. Uh, but I did want to get, you know, what you I, were feeling. And I would I, probably I, rather I, play a tournament of this than 40K. Oh, 100%, yes. It seems like the batshit craziness would be a level lower and much easier to deal with. Though, apparently there is some crazy stuff with... Uh, you know, some of the factions where it's like, I'm getting first turn charges across the board. And I'm like, well, oh. fine, I'll, I'll go play in the fun bracket after we're done with this travesty you call a game. Yeah, I see, but my silly can do like that. that yeah, yeah. Any game like that, you just, you're going to have people who just look in the win. And that's fine. That's that's the point of a tournament. Correct. You know, 
you take what you want to win. And I take what I want to have a good time. Yeah, because uh, I play Sylvaneth and you can get first turn every single time. Uh, and you can have someone charge um, you, the your entire army first turn before you even get to play. It's to be fair, though, most there are very few units in the game that are mean enough to get that kind of charge and actually do more than pin you in place and kill some dudes. Correct. Most of those units are going to get their ass whooped because, sure, they're in your face, but you're going to bring your entire army to bear on them. Correct. So. Oh, hey. Welcome, Slugger and Nathan, who are watching us on Facebook Live. Hey, guys. Thanks a lot. Um, so, you're looking to play more games? Yeah, absolutely. I'll play some more games. I mean, like I said, that's what the guys are playing, and that was the main reason I chose to get into it, because they're not bringing their 40k as much, so me bringing 40k isn't doing me any good. They're not playing War Machine. They're not really mm. looking at Infinity right now, so, you know, it's one of those things. If you've got the game, you play what they got, hey, or you don't play. People keep sending me links to how I could play my ogres, you know? Yeah. My ogres that I have from Ogre Kingdoms in uh, Age of Sigmar in a in an attempt to uh, to lure me in to playing the game. And I haven't done it yet, but I only just uh, discovered this new game store. So it's it may be a matter of time. Uh, I have other games that I want to play as well. Like I said, we just got the Battle for Pelennor Fields for the Middle Earth game, and we just got the Song of Ice and Fire, so we're probably going to be playing some of that in addition to my uh, Warhammer Champions card game. So, I don't know when I'll get around to Age of Sigmar. <laughs> uh, I look forward to playing it. It's a lot of fun to me. I, I, I have a blast playing it. Um, there's just cool different things to do, and it makes it well worth it. Uh, Hi, Xander. Everybody's watching. I am working on the King Mounted King Theoden and just trying to get this all cleaned up and get go and get some base color. So, all right, want to get uh, actually, um, we do have a miniature to give away uh, to our patron subscriber. Uh, we have two people there, right? Thank you, saying, saying Xander, um, is there. Reminded me that we are going to give away our monthly miniature, um, which we will show and see later on, right before we go to media section. Uh, so let's get to the other heart of our story. Um, is um, how do you? Okay, here's the thing, and the reason why I brought this up, and I brought it up, and I wanted John to talk about it, is because John, you are on what number on your hobby streak? Um. God, I don't remember. 290-something. I think I just finished 292, 291. Yeah. God, it sounds stupid to say I don't remember, but there was a point where you just don't remember anymore. 293. I just did 293. 293. How are you? Because this is going to be a long time. Um, because people are... We're, we're so busy as a group of people now that it's not even funny. Mm -hmm. um, we're all doing stuff. I mean, we have our... Social lives, we have our lives, you know, home, we have, you know, all the other stuff that we do. How are you finding the time to do all this? Well, I mean, it's sort of the old saying, if something's important enough, you make time. To a point, I plan my day a little bit around Hobby Streak. In so much that uh, if I know I'm going to be out late somewhere, I try and get it done earlier. You know, or I just know that, all right, uh, it's Friday and I know I'm going to be out late and obviously there's no chance to do it early because I'm not going to wake up at 5 in the morning to do my hobby streak. Um, Why not? Because I like sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was to do a question about it before we uh, get too far into this. Uh, how are the Beastmen looking for Age of Sigmar? Uh, I don't know, but we do have a Beastman player. I will get in back with you on that, Solasar. Uh He's been dying for this stuff, so we'll have to, uh, you'll have to wait and see. The book came out like 12 seconds ago. Yeah. Yeah, so. that's true. <laughs> Give us a little bit of time. We haven't had a chance to even look at it. Yeah. Um, but I know that people are looking forward to it, and since it's a new one um, and it's a new book, it should do pretty well. Uh, they've product, they've got some good products, so it should do pretty awesome. Yeah. So give us just a little bit on that. 
Ooh. So yeah, so I, so I sort of uh, plan my my day around it. So like Friday, I know I'm going to be generally out later. So I just know I'm not getting to bed earlier. So I try and like something like today where I've got parts already you know clipped off the sprue from the day before. So all I have to do is clean them. I can spend just the half an hour on it. It'll be fine. And uh, you know. You just manage your time with it. Uh, there are times I'm sitting there doing nothing. I'm like, I should hobby, but I sort of base all my hobbying around my hobby streak now. So you could even be more efficient than I'm being. Because there are times when, you know, like, um, you know, I'm sitting around not doing much. I'd be just chilling on YouTube where I could be hobbying on a model. But, you know, and, and if you, even if you're doing something like a hobby streak, you can break your time up. Just keep track of it, you know, whatever. I just do this to prove that I can do it for so many days straight. My goal is a year. I'm getting very close. Yeah. Yeah, you are. Um, do you do anything while you hobby? Uh, mostly listen to music. I am incapable of, like, I'll have some videos on occasionally, but it has to be something that's not super visual. Mostly I want the uh, the sound of it because if there's something super visual on, I'm going to watch it instead of hobby. Correct. I can't watch a movie yeah. or watch a Twitch stream yeah. or anything like that while I hobby. I can do a Twitch stream. Like I'll I'll put on like I've listened to uh, you know uh, holds mini painting. I've listened to him a couple times while hobby streaking. But I'm not real. I'm just looking up every once in a while when he mentions like maybe a new color or something to see what he's doing. Correct. Yeah. You, yeah so you, but you're not watching it as in you're paying attention to every detail. Exactly. Yeah. You're not because I I used to that when I watch when I used to watch football I would do that while I while I watch football because. There's lots of downtime, but mm -hmm. it's, you know, it is what it is there. I don't really watch football anymore, so that's not really time I can spend there. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's making time. And the hardest ones have been the days when something unexpected happens and I am out super late. Like, my old job, I have a ton of late nights. And, you know, it's just a matter of going, hey, you know. Sure, I'm getting home at 10, 1030, but sometimes you, you want to keep it up. You're just going like, I'm just going to hobby streak. You just got to do it. You know, if you know it's like I said, if I know it's coming, I'll plan and have something easier to work on. So I'm not wasting time getting it ready. No, I'm just in there, grab things, start cleaning models and go. Yeah, it, my hobby time, I have to decide how I'm going to do it based on how I want to do it. As in, do I want to sit here and concentrate and work on something really, really hardcore? Can I need to get it done or can I just spend a lazy day just doing whatever I want? And like this weekend, this last Saturday, I spent the day putting together all the uh, Battle of Helenor stuff. And awesome. so uh, and I got everything put together. Models are amazing. They're fun. Um, but I just put on a bunch of movies because um, I can take the time and go, all right, I can take a break and, you know, let, oh, I need to watch this scene because I know this is something that's pinnacle or, you know, whatever. Okay, I can listen to this and stuff. So it all depends on what I'm doing and how and what my timeline is. Like, I'm going to have to paint up some Grimkin models pretty soon. And so I'm going to have to actually sit and concentrate on that and not, you know, get all into it. Yeah. So I won't be able... I'll probably be doing it on stream. That way it keeps me busy and I have people talking and music going. But yeah. I won't be watching a movie while I'm doing it. Type thing. Well, and if you've just been doing a bunch of yard work, for instance, you're, you're not going to want to come in if, if you've got some time to hobby. You're not going to come in and start doing freehand. Oh, no, what no. you do then you is know, you actually hobby you're just gonna, you do the yard work. Well, <laughs> you do yard work. You you come in. Your hands are all shaky. Yeah. You, you just, like, throw some dry brushing on some bases. Yeah. I mean, that's yep. a perfect thing for when you're... You know, your arms are tired, you're lacking some coordination. You just plan to do something that's super simple, like filing models or, you know, dry brushing. Clipping. Well, yeah, it's, it's yeah. sort of, you yeah. do that, but you can also, like I said, you also do the opposite way, where, so like on a Saturday, if I know I'm going to be out late, I'll do it in the morning. Mm -hmm. And you can do whatever, because you just woke up, you're fresh, you're good. The night I know I'm going to be late, I have something easy peasy to go. Nothing where I need, you know... Because my vision sometimes gets blurry late at night as I'm getting tired. You know, I had to really struggle the the night we played Legion until 11:30, and I'm like, "Well, crap! <laughs> I need to get something done. Let's just go." You know That's what? Another... And 
you'd be surprised uh, if you just decide, you tell yourself, and you don't have to do like a half an hour of hobbying, you don't have to do an hour, you just say, I want to get five guys assembled. Just five guys. And if you do that every night, all of a sudden you've got a whole army pretty soon. Okay. Way sooner than you expected. To be fair, five guys assembling can take you a while. I just cleaned five, four guys that were cut out already, and it took me the better part of a half an hour. Yeah, but if you approach it with, I only have five guys to do, you'd be like, yeah, oh, yeah. okay, okay, I could do that. Not this 36 is, models. Goal. Yeah, that's right. the other good one is if you set yourself a goal. Yeah. Um, so back when we were getting, we were, when me and the guys were going to more tournaments and, you know, I wanted to paint an army and some of them required painted armies, I would sit down and I look at my old Facebook feed and I'm like, all right, it says here that, you know, I'm sitting around, you know, good day painting at the store, you know, did X models, got got Y models left. Set your oh, goal. Hi, Gilbert. Welcome, uh, Gilbert and Brian are joining us from Facebook Live. But I mean, you, you you've got you've got to set your time up, and you've got to do it where it's not a chore. Mm -hmm. When you're modeling and you're hobbying as a chore, then you don't look forward to it, and that's what I got when I was doing my Grimkin because I hate painting units. I hate 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 painting units. It's it's just because it's so monotonous and it's no change in it, and I was just like, uh. But you've got to you've got to figure out and do something, especially if you're in a rut. Go find something new and different to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take well, you your know, my stuff's time. very scatter shot sometimes. Yes, and some of that's just oh, I just got this stuff because this sounds horrible for someone who used to have like all the models. I'm giving kind of light on models to assemble. I'm probably not going to run out, but yeah, it's it, I, I am way more close to fully assembled than I ever thought I would be. <laughs> well, now, you know, you get that desk, and you start painting, and that's going to be awesome. And that's another thing. So, like, you know, let's say I know I'm mostly out of models to assemble, and I want to paint something. Instead of, you know, coming home and like, oh, God, suddenly I'm in a rush. i got to set the desk for painting. You set the desk for painting the night before, the night when you have time. Yeah. You plan it more. And, and you know what? Crazy, that's but... part of your hobby streak right there is just getting your palette and stuff set up. I don't really think that's that, that. I understand, but I wouldn't really do that. Count that as a uh, as hobby streak time. You, you want to get that done beforehand. That's part of the planning. You're like, you're like, let's say I know I'm going to have time this week and I'm going to paint. I'm going to take some actual extra time and have and clean the, this area off and get my paints out and get everything ready so that I'm ready to go. Mm hmm Because it helps some of the nights when you maybe don't have as much time if you're ready to go. That's why uh, the the late night after playing Legion. I'm like, I need to do something. I don't have anything ready because I expected to have more time. So I'm like, oh, look, this box set came with terrain. Cool, I can just start cleaning terrain. So I started cleaning terrain. you got to have that. you got to know what you've got coming and plan it. I mean, a little planning goes a long way, doubly so when you, something, when you work on anything, it takes time because you could be more efficient with your time. Example, that, that late night with Legion where I'm like, if I had known that Paul was not going to show up until you know, 7, 7.30 and have dinner to eat, I would have, instead of sitting down watching videos waiting for him, because I expect him at like 6, I'd have gone upstairs and done my hobby streak early. You know, that kind of planning stuff definitely helps. Yeah, getting ahead, um, like my Wednesday stream that I do, I've already like, alright, this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to work on this model, going to work on this, going to have all this stuff, uh, get it ready, I... Before we even start a podcast, I come in and 30 minutes before, I come in and make sure everything's cleaned up, get with the paints I want near me, get everything ready, and go from there. Because, I mean, you've got to be... And you have to get in the mindset, too. And you don't want to get in the mindset that it's work. You want to get in the mindset, hey, I'm just going to sit here and chill, hang out, do what I need to. Come and chill on a stream, chill listening to a book. Because that's what I used to. Before we started streaming a lot on uh, Twitch, I used to just listen to audiobooks all the time. So, you can just get ready for that. Isn't there a stupid bug in my drink. I'm going to have to kill this bastard. No, he died already. So, I mean, you just got to get in the mood. Don't try to force yourself either. Because then you get in that of going, oh, God, I have to do this. Well, I've had a couple nights where it was like that, where I'm like, eh, maybe you should let it go. But, you know, on the other end, I've said this multiple times, 
there are a bunch of locals and random people on Facebook and Twitter who said they've been inspired by the fact that I, you know, hobby streak so much that yep. made them want to hobby more. So that keeps me going on the times that it might be work. And Kathy, how do you do it? Because, I mean, you, that's, not to be rude or anything, that's kind of your job. <laughs> I mean, you paint models, you know, for a living. How do you handle well, doing I time for yourself? Setup, my setup is set up all the time. Uh, and what I've been doing is we just started, me and some friends, doing a, uh, a Google Hangout on Wednesday night. And we just... You know, up to just some other painters, just some other hobbyers. Uh, and we just work, we show each other what we're working on. We talk about it and everything. And for me, I get more done in a situation like that where I'm talking to other people. Like back in the, the Battle Bunker days when we had the paint bar there, there was a bunch of people. We'd all be sitting up at the counter painting our models, talking about our projects, talk, sharing different techniques, what colors we like to use for you know, different things, and uh, it was a great community, and it made me want to hobby more. So I'm a social hobbier. I, when we go to the game store on Tuesday, I'm looking forward to it. I'm I'm hoping I can, you know, I'll let some other people know that I'm going to be there, and you know, who knows? Maybe somebody else shows up to to hobby with me and Jim to just sit there, and we're going to be assembling. Uh, our battle for Pelennor Field stuff, and and uh, then we can bring it home and uh, and prime it. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And we have the, like I said, we have the Wednesday night hangout. I got a bunch of stuff done, and I decided I would be painting stuff for me on the Wednesday night hangout. So I have, and then I have my streams on Monday and Thursday, which is with other people and that really helps me to you know focus on what i'm doing and that's it's really been a, a great help to me is is just being with other people talking to other people uh knowing there's other people out there while i'm just you know talking about what i'm doing so that's it's the social thing for me so you, you you couldn't sit there and listen to an audio book and do your hobbying. I mean, I have done. But you would I prefer. I have done lots of times, but I prefer to 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 be with other people doing it, whether it's online or you know at the game store or whatever. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why I'm happy we found this particular game store because they have an area designated for people who want to just hobby on their models. That's good. It's a good thing. Absolutely. I could agree with that. It's hard to find that. Usually it's all taken up by tables because people are constantly wanting places to play, which you understand, but still. Yeah, because space costs money and it's hard to designate space uh, yeah. for that. Well, they have tables for at Grognard Games. That's the place. And I'll talk about it. Grognard Games in Roselle, Illinois. They, uh, they've got tables for tabletop wargaming. So Jim and I, the first time we were there, we played our game of bolt action. And they have tables for card games because if you're a game store, you have to have the tables for your uh, Magic the Gathering organized play stuff. Mm -hmm. That's just a fact of game stores. Um, and then in the back, they have more tables and areas where you can have your lamps. They actually have some hot lights for people to use for, you know, painting and I just I thought that was awesome I'm trying to find me a, an armor wash <laughs> I can't find my p3 armor wash what no. madness. wait I think I, I found just, it I just used yeah, black wash and water down a little bit well I like the metallic look to the the, the p3 to to that. the p3 Nothing? has a grayer look to it <laughs> Oh yeah, she I was mean, about to blast you. Maybe someday when you when you paint more, you'll you'll have something to say to it. Uh huh. <laughs> but when you paint more than I do, I mean, it's, look at all this. Okay, there's one painted model on my table. I am told that you have painted things. I have. I hold <laughs> on. We we can do this. Oh, let's slide you out of here. 
That's an entire oh, painted oh. Earth fleet, pretty much. Just got that ah. one squadron of Star Furies to finish up. So, there you go. I painted all that <laughs> many, many moons ago. Well, I mean, I like it. Like, um, when you were talking about, you know, streaming, I like it when people are on the stream, too, because it helps me. And, oh, yeah. you know, I, 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 I get to be silly, get to crack stupid jokes. Also, you know, we're trying out new music, and so this music, I'm like, what was it? Um, Wednesday, I accidentally uh, left where it says Kathy's Painting uh, on the Twitch stream. Oh, I saw that. You had it there, and then when I was painting, it said Gonzo Paint. Yeah. So. And this guy goes, I don't see any painting. I just see a guy dancing in a chair. And it's because I was trying to get the stream uh, worked up because there was something going on, and I was <laughs> dancing with the music in the chair. And I was like, yeah, sorry, I'll fix that. And, uh, and it probably still says Gonzo Painting. It doesn't say anything about the podcast. I need to get on that a little bit better. But yeah, I uh, should probably check that stuff before I start. Yeah, but I mean, it's fun. I like I like to stream and paint. Um, I actually a lot of people gave me a lot of good compliments on that uh, troll I did, and I was I was it really looked good. The, yeah. the metals turned out really well. Yeah, the metals were, came out really really cool. Um, which I can't wait because I want to paint uh, the fell beast, and I don't know how I'm going to do him because he's all black. So I'm going to learn some black techniques. Right. Uh, you have an airbrush. I do have an airbrush, and I have a really cool one. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So it's just different things. Um, but other than that, I mean, it was pretty cool. Um, we, what time is it? I haven't been chatting that much. There's almost time. Uh, let's go ahead and do our giveaway, um, guys. If um, this was the last time that uh, we could have done a raffle, yes, Andrew, we are on Twitch. Um, more than Dice a podcast is on Twitch. It's easier to see us. We get your messages a lot quicker. Yeah, I shall post a link to that right now. Um, oh. Right now, guys. I will not. <laughs> uh, we only have two people that were part of the um, paint uh, for the mini that Kathy had painted, and I need someone to give me a one or a two. Kathy, give me a one or a two. 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 Xander, you have gotten your mini for the month. Uh, Ooh, Kathy painted congrats. up um, the Breach Storm model. I put up a picture of it right here. Um, so I'll start like two. <laughs> I painted that in three sessions live on Twitch. So people who uh, who saw that, that's, that's what I'm giving away for our last... Uh, raffle our last raffle we are no longer allowed to do raffles on patreon guys that's the reason why we have to change up some stuff uh so we are changing that up a bit uh right now we only have one person that is eligible to win a miniature painted by kathy but we're working on this just give us a little bit of time um yeah. xander uh is getting this miniature it's not even out yet uh it's for the breach storm game um given to us and yeah. kathy's going to get away the Kickstarter for that right now, right? Yeah, right. Yes, oh, we can get the this Kickstarter. Kickstarter is live for Breachstorm, and he is fully and funded you already. Can, you can Good. find out more about that at uh, www.breachstorm.com. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yes, you got a kitty. Um, she'll be sending that to you. Um, so, I guess, guys, we had to change up our patron because they told us we couldn't do a raffle. Uh, anymore, and I guess it's against their terms of service for anybody to do a raffle on Patreon. So we're sw changing things up. Just give us a little bit, because um, we do want to do cool things for you, and I know y'all want to support yeah. us. And we throw ideas at us if you have any ideas. Like, I'd love to see this as a level on Patreon. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we've got some crazy ideas, but we'd love to hear your crazy ideas, too, because oh, yeah. Send us you're the ideas. guys who are listening to us. I mean, yeah. some ideas. Cause Cause what, kind of, what kind of content do you want, uh, do you want as Patrons? Um, yeah, because one of them we got an idea for. I think it's actually oh. a really cool idea. It's We've, really cool, but it's a it's a lot of moving parts of that one. Yeah, but if we get that one worked out and we kind of get it going, it'll be super sweet. Oh yeah. So, um, so let's go ahead and go and get over to our media section. Um, media section. We're I'm gonna work on this miniature stuff. a little bit. I didn't get much done on them. I just got you know the leather. Face coats on the horse. Is that yeah. all you got done? You know, you can keep working on that while we talk about I am. the media. Just keep your paint cam on. You want to just leave it on here? 
sure. Yeah, why not? Okay. All, all right. right. Yeah, I need to get. I want to. I want to do a, a, a null wash. Ooh, that chair did not need to. Are you doing up. leather on the uh, parts that's brown, or is that like? I guess I is that going to be a gold or? No, it's a brown. It's supposed to be. Okay. I, I looked online and um, looked on the what the actual model looked like, and this is leather, and then of course it's scale mail. Uh, but the armor, I'm going to be using this greedy gold uh, mm -hmm. to do the like the filigree and everything. Okay. So it'll be kind of a di bit different. Uh, I wanted to dull down the metal a bit, but I'm going to bring it up just a tad bit more. So does the filigree go into the crevices? No, like the fil or... it, it's really hard to see. But when you get when you get your copy <laughs> and you look uh -huh. at your model, the armor, the raised part of the armor is like a gold. Like I think that's back. one of the ones I might get to paint. I know I uh, years and years and years ago when uh, GW's Lord of the Rings game first came out, I I that painted the Aomir. Yeah, mounted Aomir. Yeah, that's actually uh, when I started at the Games Workshop. I started right as they released the uh, the Fellowship of the Ring box set. Yeah, <laughs> and we immediately went and got that. That's yeah. I got a free copy. I got a free copy of each of them for working there, and I got the all three movies free with uh, the staff. That was shortly after we started uh, uh, painting miniatures all times. the time. Really good times. So, uh, I've had a lot of people that have said that uh, they are really super psyched about the Lord of the Rings coming back um, in the well, game. Jim and I have loved, we loved the mechanics of it, you know, from day one. So yeah. we definitely were looking forward to playing that again. Yeah, my end screen. Oh, we got a follow. Thank you, UV Deceperverance. <laughs> UV Semper. Yeah, I guess. I, I'm going to yep. guess that Semperverance is, is actually <laughs> probably uh, Latin for something. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the follow. We appreciate it. We're almost <laughs> at 300 followers. That's kind of crazy. Oh, right. really think about it. That's kind of cool. Uh, so let's go to the media section. Um. So, anybody, anybody want to start? Because I have roughly three things I need to talk about. Three or four. Oh. Always I was an flourishing. Very well. Always green. Go ahead, John. I'm sorry. I was looking up uh, what uh, Semper Virens meant. And it means always flourishing or always green. <laughs> Aww. That's hey, cool. I care enough. Latin. I Latin. care enough. You do, and I don't care at all. I'm unfeeling, heartless. I wife. wanted to take Latin in high school, but they stopped it the year before I got there. Oh, I sucks. can read Roman numerals really well. <laughs> <laughs> We're so all and, over that. So, John, uh, would you like to start us off with a uh, movie, TV show, or something you uh, watched, read, or listened to? Sure. Uh, I unfortunately did not get to the last three or four episodes of Jack Ryan because my week was weird, as I said. Um, in fact, I didn't get to anything I was, until late. Uh, I did uh, sit down yesterday and watch the original RoboCop with Banyan. Um, still holds up pretty well, um, but I, being extra critical of it this time, and probably the first time I've been really super critical of it, I feel like a really good director could have done a lot more with that movie. And that is saying something, because I think Paul Verhoeven's Robocop is a very, very good movie, you know, with good satire and, and political commentary. But there's a lot of little points where they leave you to sort of decide for yourself that that's why this person's acting that way. And as an action movie, you don't always think about it. You know, like... I'm sitting there. <laughs> yes, it's an LED in a box. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to think about, like, man, why is Murphy's partner, who knew him for all of, like, one day practically, like, going all in to save his life? When I sit and think, and she, it occurred to me that she really feels bad that he was killed, because really it's her fault, because she chose to go in after Bodiger and the gang without backup herself you know, with him, and they split up, violating all the rules of police work. Oh, yeah. So when you stop and think about it, what looks like a you know a flaw in the movie isn't is just a <laughs> sort of character plot point they didn't smack you in the face with, which I like. And there's a lot of that stuff in there. Uh, you can really be critical and, and watch the movie and get a lot more from it. But if you don't want to, 
Robocop is awesome because he kicks people's asses and shoots people in the dick for trying to rape people, which is awesome. <laughs> that um, spawned so many lines. Yeah, but I just, I'm like, I feel like that was fair response. <laughs> I mean, I can't really argue with that at all. No. So, how but many no. space herpes would you give it then? Oh, uh, Robocop gets zero space herpes. It, maybe a half. You're really looking at some of the. There's a handful of the effects that don't work out. Um, you know, like the LED in a box. <laughs> they had the tracking device. First, they hold it. It's literally a box with LED, and you're like, "What are you doing, guys?" <laughs> you sort of gave up on that one, didn't you? You could have painted something and had it done in post or some shit. But no, it's still good. I seriously zero shots. Uh, I was trying to get some time today to watch the. Uh, remake of it, which I have seen because mm-hmm. I have it in the same Blu-ray collection, but uh, we did not get the time for that. Spoiler, it's it's not going to get zero shots of... Was it zero uh, face repeats? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, there are some parts I think are better from my memory, but I want to rewatch it and find out. Maybe that'll be next week. Maybe I'll have that watch for next week. Uh, and I have a lot of two movie sets where I have the original and the remake... Or I have, you know, well, or different sets rather than remakes. So I'll be doing a lot of those. I think we're we'll trying to do a lot of those coming up here. Because I have the Longest Yard original and remake. Clash of the Titans original remake. There, there's a bunch out there. So I think I might try and do some of those. We might. You know what we could do? We could do an episode of nothing but remakes. We all oh, each divide yeah. up a, a remake movie. What do you think? Or we all watch uh, the same movie so that we can actually, you know... We get our different takes on it. Mm-hmm. What? Like and we tell, have done. And we could with, tell uh, everyone in tell everyone in, in advance so that they could watch it too. What? Yeah, we could have it playing? like a movie club or something. Oh yeah. Was that totally. copyrighted? Let me ask another John. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> it's not copyrighted. Fuck, let's take that shit. That's what he would want us to do. <laughs> if this is three. In any case, please someone save me. Go. Kathy, what you got for us? I have not planned to review anything, although last night as I was sitting on the couch with my mom and dad, who were visiting from Minnesota, uh, we watched a few episodes of The, the Saint, mm-hmm. uh, which is, you know, the, the old, old 1960s Roger Moore before he became James Bond uh, TV series, where he's kind of like a freelance spy. Yep. And those are really kooky. I can say that because it was the 1960s. Yes. I They're mean, super kooky. How, how do they hold up age-wise? They're, they're so cheesy. It's ridiculous. So uh, it's, it's, You need a couple of uh, shots of Kraken, but I wouldn't give it any space herpes because they're just ludicrous and funny. So you, you, on a scale of that's quaint to dated as fuck... Oh, it's dated as fuck. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go, everyone. The Saint, dated as fuck. No one's really surprised. But a good movie. <laughs> it's a good movie. Val I Kilmer. still haven't seen the movie. I need to watch that. Movie yeah, I really good. enjoy that. It's kind of a remake. It is kind of a remake. There's also, I told you, there in Amazon Prime, there was a pilot that got made, in, and they released it as a solo movie that was enjoyable. I watched it one night just sitting around like, oh, The Saint on that? Sure, I'll watch that. What the hell? So right now, I have the theme music for it in my head. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's, that that's playing in my head right now. Do, 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 do. There's a good remake of that in the uh, the later movie, of course, because that's, so that's one thing I really love about, you know, the 90s. They wouldn't necessarily make a new theme. They would take the theme and they would try and update it to be more modern and yeah. maybe techno y, which kinda I kind of like. Kind of like the BBC does with the Doctor Who every uh, every yeah. season. <laughs> or um, uh, one of the podcasts I listened to, we did an episode on Superman. And they talked a little bit about Superman Returns, even though they were talking about first Superman. They said the best thing they did with that, and one of the worst things about Man of Steel, <gasps> was that they didn't use John Williams' theme in Man of Steel while in Superman Returns. Um, John Ottman actually used part of John Williams' original score because that is the Superman score. Yes. That is what it is. 
Semper Viren says, have any of you seen Krull? It's so bad, it's good. Well, yes. of course. Of course you've seen Krull. <laughs> Krull is amazing. Yes. That is that rates right up there. Well, that's better than ice pirates. No. Yes. yes. Uh, so that's that's so hard to to fight against. John, John, so, yes, trust me. Yes, for fuck's sake. Uh, I'm I don't ice know. Pirate. You're I've misremembering Gonzo. I'm going to have to watch both of them, and I'll give I'll give you I'll give you. A, yes. All right. I, 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 I think you should them. double feature them. Just make sure you got a full bottle of Maker's Mark. <laughs> no, because I'll enjoy it. It's like watching the Last well. Dragon. <laughs> oh, sword and sorcerer. Sword and okay, sorcerer yeah, yeah, yeah. Firstly, oh, worse oh. than Beastmaster. Oh, Beastmaster. I like Beastmaster though, so oh, you know. Yeah, Beastmaster's Beastmasters. I gotta watch it again. I got it on a like twenty. Like, I'll buy those DVD sets. Like, look, there's twenty fantasy movies for like ten bucks. I'm like. How can you go wrong? 20 movies First for 10 bucks. First time I saw that, I was like 12, and I loved it. And I liked Mark Singer because he was also on V, which I was a giant uh, nerd for. Yep. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> oh. You know, so, that's what we should do. We should do a Kroll, Beastmaster, Ice Pirates, Last Dragon. A marathon? I've yes. Uh, a a review marathon? We, sh we should do that. that. Oh, Kodo and Poto. Yes. I believe one says Kodo and Poto. They're adorable. Yeah, we, we should make that, and we should do a review of all those. <laughs> so, let's see how... Yes, you have to... We all... Everybody, we'll make it a, we'll make it an event. I don't want to watch... To, I don't want to watch Ice Pirates again that soon. Okay, we'll have to do it. It's too soon. We'll have to do it eventually. Oh, the thing with the wings? Yeah. I, Slave One is just saying, I like those guys who flew down and... Uh, slow dance you to death and hug you with their wings. Yep. <laughs> Even though he it was filled with typos what he just typed in the chat. I Bug totally you with understood the wings? it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, they just take their wings and wrap them around you and they basically digest you yes. in their loving grasp. That's creepy as fuck. Yeah, yes, it is. It is. <laughs> yes. Also, you know, Beastmaster is an awesome movie. Definitely can do Beastmaster. We should do Beastmaster at some point. I've got that one. Yeah, I'll, I'll find that one. Yep. Crawls on my buy list, so. <laughs> yeah, those are some classics. I think they match up well. Oh, I told you guys I was so disappointed that I missed the uh, Rift Tracks live of Crawl in the theater. Yes. I heard the morning of. I'm like, no, it would have been so awesome. I told Norrin he was so depressed too. Because hey, I bet you. The Bug King is on here. Hey, Bug King, what's up, buddy? They approve of digestion of people. I yeah. love you, Bug King. Or but was it? I don't even um, know you. Who who all went home and bought that foam boomerang that it was shaped like crawl, and everybody went home and tried to throw it and do everything. The glaive. It's, it's the, glaive. the glaive. Everybody tried to do that. <laughs> I remember that as a kid. There was like some company came out with this foam boomerang, and it was shaped like the glaive. And it was like, and it had a button on the center of it. Didn't do anything. It was just weight. I remember as a kid, I'd grab it, hold it, and go, shing, and then throw it at my brother and hit him in the head. And I was like, come back. Of and of course, it wouldn't do anything. Yeah, it wouldn't come back, yeah. <laughs> why, do you, why wouldn't you throw things at your brother? Mm. I, pretty much anything I would throw at my brother. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there was plenty of that going on. All right. So, um, so. let's see. My <laughs> first one. I watched and I binge watched the entire season of Iron Fist too. The oh, second wow. season of Iron Fist. That's brave. Yeah. Um, let's just say Iron Fist two was much better than Iron Fist one. Um, in the way that it was done, it definitely was better than the original, but it still wasn't great. Uh, out of all the Marvel TV shows on Netflix, I think it's the worst still. Um, I haven't watched Jessica Jones or Luke Cage Season 2 yet. Uh, but I did watch this one because I knew that Episode 1 was... Or Season 1 was so horrible of Iron Fist. And he's a cool character and such, but it was just really bad. The characters were not likable. The, the martial arts was okay. Uh, it wasn't great. Um, the story was pretty boring. 
the overall story and arc was pretty boring. Um, it just wasn't good enough. I was not happy with it. Um, that disappoints me because Iron Fist is my is the only character of that group I actually give a fuck about. Yeah, it it, it, it was just bland. Was it good? No. Was it bad? No. Um, it just was. It just was, and that's the best way to put it. In the words of Not Brush Out Dave, meh. It was it was meh, and that's the best way to put it. Um, the story, the villains, and the side characters were meh. Everything was just meh about it. I was not impressed with this season, and there's a chance we won't get another season of it. That's not gonna really surprise, honestly. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. I'm not surprised either because it's been. I'm almost meh. surprised there was a second season. I was too, as bad as the ratings it was before. Um, so I have to give it a uh, 2.5 space herpes because that's just the meh. Because yeah, it's just it's just right in the go middle. And get some graphic novels of Iron Fist. Yes, if you like oh, Iron yeah. Fist, don't watch it because you'll be like, "This fucking sucks." Uh, but I was yeah, not impressed. Uh, Iron Fist Immortal Weapon, I think, is the good one. Yep. I think it's called Immortal Weapons. Yeah, it's like a six. It's like four or five, maybe six uh, uh, collections together, and they are fucking really good. And I suggest it. Yeah. It, it, it was not good. So, if you have to, watch it. If not, you're not going to feel left out. So, other than that. So, 2.5. Space Harpies. 2.5. All right. Do you have anything else, John, that you would like to review? Oh, I have two more things, actually. Excellent. Uh, on Monday, I got home and figured I had plenty of time this week because the whole week was going to be kind of light and not expecting to do much. <laughs> I was so wrong. I watched a wonderful sci-fi movie that I've seen multiple times, including in the theater, called Stealth. Now, what is Stealth? It is basically... It's an AI movie. It starts off with the premise that there's these three super advanced stealth fighters they're testing out. And they get uh, you know they get the right to go and like we're gonna put you guys out in you know actual tests, but we're adding someone else to your squad, and it's the AI in this super super advanced stealth fighter. Does that have um one of the Wayans brothers? No, it might as well have because Jamie Foxx did about a Wayans uh, uh, performance. performance in it. That's yeah. the reason why I'm thinking that. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. he was. I'm not saying he was phoning it in. But I think there's a couple scenes where they had a cardboard cutout and he did phone those in. Mm. So he, he was... Now, he wasn't terrible through all of it. There are points where he's fine. There are points where he was just cashing a paycheck. And I feel like a younger, hungrier actor would have done a better job. I think he is by far the worst performance in that movie. Um, and there's, you know, like, uh, let's see, let me try and remember some of her name. Jessica Beale's in it. Mm -hmm. She does fine. Um, the main actor, I don't actually think, has uh, done anything else since. I'm sure I'm wrong, but I haven't seen him in anything else. Uh, Josh Lucas, I haven't really seen him in anything else. Um, Sam Shepard did a great job as their commanding officer. Uh, Joe Morton is the uh, skipper of the... Uh, Aircraft carrier they end up on, and then uh, uh, Richard Roxburgh is plays like a, a computer programmer who made the AI who has to come out and deal with it a point. So I, I try and give these movies you know a different sort of rating because you know I'm kind of partial to sci-fi action, and some of the fighter scenes are great. Their design of the, uh, the the stealth fighters is amazing. I love the way they look. The Talon Fighters, it's really, really like the way it looks. The AI ship looks super advanced. Um, they do throw a lot of techno babble. I think the biggest problem they had with the movie is they tried to cram too much in and didn't give the real story enough play. Because sort of the idea is they get this AI in there and he starts learning from them and he's learning from the main character, Josh Lucas. Uh, and you know, but he's sort of taking the wrong thing from what he's doing, which is cool. That is a very cool sci-fi 
theme. You know, for an AI to learn, but learn the wrong thing. You know, he's taking the wrong lesson from it. So that's sort of cool, but they don't play enough time. It, like, it, it's, it's directed by the guy who did Triple X and The Fast and the Furious, the first one. <laughs> Rob Cohen. So he ain't got time for all of that in-depth shit. It's about the action. Get with the program, man. It, it, the action was good. There's some very cool scenes. It's sci-fi, unrealistic at points, but it's fine. Uh, if you like you know, sort of Top Gun or you know, Top Gun jet fighter stuff. There's some cool that stuff there, and there's some cool ideas here. But at the end of the day, you know, it starts. It's doing the one plot line, the AI, and it gets there, and you're like, okay, cool. This is about done. They're like, oh nope, left turn. Let's go finish this love story off that we didn't really need, <sighs> but we've got. And it's not like a terrible love story. It's it's believable. It's just that there's too much in this movie. They don't give enough of it any time. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to give it generously two space herpes. I do enjoy it. I own it. I saw it in the theater for free. It was well worth the money in the theater. It was well worth the five bucks I paid for the Blu-ray. It has paid dividends. And if, if you got the chance to see it, the cheaper the better, obviously, with any movie like this. Because it may not be your thing. But if you like his other movies, you'll probably enjoy this. If you like fighter stuff, you'll probably enjoy this. If you like deep, insightful sci-fi like RoboCop, you're not going to enjoy this as much. <laughs> deep and insightful. Well, the, both these movies are sort of the same thing, where but RoboCop does it a little better because they're not trying to do too much. Mm-hmm. This one, like, literally, could have been ser- better served by focusing on the AI more and having it become more thing. Because in the end, you see the potential. Where it's like, oh, now it's learning the right lessons because. You know, he's like, you never leave the wingman behind. I'm going to get her, which is cool. And then he learns that and sacrifices himself, the, the AI, to save them. She's like, that's that's cool story. You just needed to do more in the center. You work it out a little better. Just, you know, just miss the mark. It happens in a lot of movies, unfortunately. And that movie was a bomb because it was quite expensive because they did, like, they did props so good that People had pictures on the deck of the aircraft carrier. They're like, are they testing a new fighter? Because they had these mock-ups of the fighters on the aircraft carrier. They're like, they're testing a new fighter. Like, nope, it's a movie. (laughs) Ah. Gonzo, what else you got? Um, Let's see. My other one was I finished the season four of Killjoys. Mm -hmm. Um, They wrap up a major plot line. So not to hear... They weren't originally going to give a season five, but now I'm hearing tales. Maybe they get a season five. They do get a season five. I was fully prepared for season four to be it. I was like, oh, this is the end of it. This is going to be it. They're done. Cool. I'm okay. And then I got to the end of it and I was like, all right, the story, the over ending arcing story was done, but then they popped at the end and it was season five and there was all this stuff and it, they've already filmed it. It's already looked like they filmed most of it or whatever. And so they're getting a new season out of it. Um, and maybe this is the season to wrap up the characters, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Um, so I watched that. Um, Killjoys was good. Um, hey guys. what? Cat Jackson just sent 95 stars on Facebook Live. Oh, thank you, Cat. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Cat. Cat. We appreciate that. Love um, you, honey. Cat's awesome. Many loves. Um, and so. <sighs> Big complaint with Killjoys. I liked Killjoys when it was about doing Killjoy stuff. Hunting down bounties, going against people. This whole green goose storyline, I'm glad it's over. Okay. I'm glad I it's haven't, over. Uh, I only watched the first episode because it's the only one that's free on Amazon Prime, but I was intrigued enough to look more into it. Yeah. Um, it- the last season was about all the green goose stuff, and I'm kind of, I was over it. I was like, I'm glad it's done. It's over. Get, you were done with the Green Goo story plot line. Let's so, get back to being Killjoys. Can I guess that it was something like they're caught up in something bigger than them, sort of like in The Expanse, but not done as well? Um, yes, but it's a background of the main one of the main characters. Okay. Um, there's there's the background of the main character, the the lady, and another guy. They're kind of intermingled and stuff. Okay. But, um, and, and it's okay. There wasn't anything wrong with it. I just enjoy it better when they were being Killjoys. Yeah. Well, and they were hunting cool. down people. Uh, I it still was... definitely want to give that a shot. But... Yeah. 
Because when I saw the first episode, I liked it. Everyone's like, oh, no, Dark Matter's better. Then I watched Dark Matter, and I'm like, I don't know if it's better for me. Yes. Uh, I just like I just like Killjoys when they were doing Killjoy yeah. stuff. Yeah, when they were not trying to aim for higher than they are. Correct. And so I guess there's a season five coming up. And so I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully it'll be good. And it'll, it'll be new, more character. I mean, there were some good feels in the series. Um, because they added a couple of new characters um, that were part of the ship. I put quotations around that. Um, and so it it, it, it it comes out. It's still good. I'd say one and a half, two space herpes, just because it's kind of annoying. I'd rather see... Um, them doing Killjoy stuff. So, um, and now I'm going to go with the Bug King's um, Altered Carbon. Can't wait for next Loved season. Loved it. Can't yes, wait for next cannot season. wait for next yeah, season. Yeah, Altered Carbon, yeah. And, and, yeah, you better believe we'll be talking about that when the next season comes out. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's one I've been able to keep, keep current on, which is difficult for me, but I'm trying. So, yes, can't uh, wait for that one. So I actually have one more, Gonzo. Yes, tell us. Uh, I watched, uh, inspired by the purchase of the local store, the first episode of The Flash. Oh, the TV, new TV series, I'm guessing? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, the, the newer one, not, not well, I mean, John right. Wesley Ships in both of them, but not the one starring John Wesley Ships. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I really enjoyed it, actually. Um, I definitely think uh, if I decide to rewatch Arrow, like I was really talking about, I'm going to jump in on stuff I haven't seen because the old stuff is a little tough to keep up with and be like, I've seen this. It's just a matter of remembering it. I'm not sure I want to live it again. But The Flash is all new stuff. They're doing it well. Yes. And it's a bit more upbeat than Arrow started out. Yep. And uh, all the characters are a bit more likable. Like, because to be honest, when you start off Arrow, Holly is not fucking likable. No. I couldn't get into Arrow. um, I mean, I liked I liked Diggle and I liked uh, Felicity and Ali. Eventually, became more likable, but not to start. But from the start, Barry Allen's likable, understandable, relatable. Um, relatable, and it's not as inherently it's not as CW as the Arrow was. Correct. I'll, I'll agree with you on that one. Which is always the big problem with them. So I definitely want to get some more. Maybe I'll start watching that. Uh, more after I get done with all of Jack Ryan because I've got a couple more episodes to go there. There's so much TV to catch up on. I don't really have. I need like to get a job where my job is to watch TV. Oh yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, that would be my uh, my life's calling right there. Yeah. Watch TV for you know. Yeah, I could do that. Yep. So I enjoyed the crap out of the first episode. I'm gonna give it. Uh, it was pretty much on target. I'm gonna give it uh, zero space herpes. I imagine the whole series won't keep up with that, but as a first episode, um, it was it was very good. Good. And we got some requests. Um, the movie Fortress. To I've watch. heard of Fortress. I think I've seen it, but it's been a long, long time. Nineteen ninety-two. Christopher Lambert and Kurtwood Smith. Dystopian Clear sci-fi. I'm like, wow. So we got I think I've heard request. of it, but don't actually think I've seen it. Thinking about it the, now, the premise sounds familiar. Like maybe I saw part of it on cable back back in the day, way way back in the mist of time. Mist of time. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Kathy, do you have anything else, or are you just? I I have only been watching uh, old Doctor Who on uh, on my retro TV channel. 7 o'clock every night they play Doctor Who and right now it's the fourth Doctors and he has just taken Leela on and those are my most favorite episodes so I've been really enjoying that. Scarf, right? What? Fourth Doctor, Scarf? Yes, Scarf and, and Leela. I'm so, trying, yeah. trying to remember, it's been a while. Yeah. yeah I, I don't even know how you could forget because uh, he's not my doctor. Uh, see, I was nine, and, and Pyramids of Mars was my first episode that when I discovered uh, Doctor Who. So, 
That was uh, Peter Davison for me. That's, he was my doctor. Xander told us that there should be a tier on our Patreon that they get to choose the movie we have to review. That all three of us... Ooh, I like that. John? I like that. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, Gonzo, sure. you're the one who gets to uh, put, be the person Hold who on. types all that stuff in. Notepad. Don't kill me. I Patreon like that. On ideas. Yes, we do. I, I do, Bug King. Uh, I've got that one I on my list. I have not yet. I have not yet uh, really watched anime. I would like to, I'm sure. I'm almost positive that I would like most anime. I just haven't had a chance. There's so many things on my watch list. I yeah, am watching know. one of them. I do have a couple in my um, list, so give me a bit. We're still watching it. Uh, I actually have three things left. Uh, we only have a little bit of time left. I finished The Joy of Tex uh, season off. Great season. Watch it, guys. I recommend it. The guys are hilarious, so we don't have to worry about that one. Um, then I watched the new Mummy, the Tom Cruise Mummy. Um, yeah? It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. You're I'm going to be honest. You're waving your hands like, I, I, please, please, no, no, no one do this. Um, no, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, which is good. Uh, they did try to get a little bit of humor in it to kind of do an homage to the original, but it didn't work. Um, I think if they wouldn't have called it the Mummy and they would have called it something else, it wouldn't have the stigma behind it. If you know what I'm saying, sure, because you've got a lot of things to compare with it. And I actually liked Brendan Fraser's Mummy movies. Love so his. I. Yes, his is you amazing. Know? I, even the third one, it's it's obviously mm. the weakest of the group, but I still enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it it was bad. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So no. I can only give it. I can. It was meh. We'll give it the two point five. It was meh. <laughs> meh. Very meh. good. Watch We're gonna give it the meh. Instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it wasn't great. Uh, it had really good special effects. I will say that though, the special effects were really really good. Uh, it's one quarter of a Casablanca. <laughs> one quarter of a Casablanca. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even. I couldn't put Casablanca <laughs> in it. That would be no. No. Um, a quarter of a Casablanca. Quarter of a Casablanca. <laughs> so quarter of one Casablanca. Just pretty much skip it uh, unless you okay. want to see some really cool special effects. Skip it and watch the Brendan Fraser one. Hundred percent. Yes. Oh, definitely. There's definitely. so much fun. Yeah. yeah. There's so much. It's so much better. Um, and then I have my last one. John, did you have one more? Or you were good. Nope, that was it. Okay. Uh, and it's actually because, um, and it's it's a video game. Um, I picked up Marvel Spider-Man for the PS4. Oh, yeah. Um, There's no buzz about that game. That's surprising. You took a chance. I have been no hearing a lot of things from the door Sarcasm. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm laughing. This game, it is one of my top three to five games of all time. Um, uh, the, of course, we're, we're going to skip past the graphics and the gameplay uh, because it's amazing and it's on a PS4 and you got a pro, you're just going to be blown away by it. Um, I'm just saying, let me interrupt you. Slugger says that uh, that movie was not fit to be a scarf in Casablanca. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, Callback, Slugger. We, we Someone kept asking us, you know, how many Casablancas is it? <laughs> Not even fit to be a scarf in Casablanca. Um, yes, Bud King, we do talk about any type of media during the media section. Uh, I spent uh, a lot of time playing this game. Um, gameplay is great. You feel like Spider-Man. You do Spider-Man stuff. You flip around. You do all the cool Spider-Man things. Um, but the story was great. The story was really, really good. Um, it's a new telling of Spider-Man, per se. Um because there's characters are in it and the way it's done. Um, and so it could be an Earth whatever. Um, but it has my favorite character of all the Spider-Mans in there, which is Miles. Um, Miles is in the game, and I you, you don't want to ruin the story, but when 2 comes out, which I 100% they're going to do it, I hope they do what they did. Because one of the things they did with this game was... You don't just play Spider-Man. You play Spider-Man, and you play Mary Jane. You get to play Miles, uh, and you get to play in all these different things, which was really cool. 
because uh, there's one scene where you're playing Mary Jane and you call in Spider Man do stuff. You're like Spider Man, take him out, and it's really cool because you like target that guy and Spider Man comes in and takes him out, and it's just kind of neat. Um, gameplay is really good, but the story was very very good. Uh, had some good feels to it, so it was different. So you just gotta be prepared for it. Oh. Uh, highly recommend. It's one of my top, top five all time games to play. Right up there with uh, Hellblade, Sin was Sacrifice, and The Last of Us. So go get it if you have a PS4. 100% recommend it. So I give it zero space herpes. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I've been shock. hearing some good things about the Spider Man game from other people. Yes. It's all over. Everybody's loving it. Also, I just want to say uh, Season 15 of Diablo, I'm told, has come out, but I haven't been paying much attention to it because I've been paying attention to the uh, Games Workshop Age of Sigmar Warhammer, uh, the Champions game, the card game. So that's like my all-consuming like geekdom right now, besides painting miniatures. <laughs> yes. If... Uh... If yeah, if you're all part of the champions, look for us on Facebook. Um, I'll play a game with you. Uh, I beat up Kathy all the time, and I beat up uh, Jackie all the time. So he wishes he beat me up all the time. <laughs> now you got me good. That one deck you had just ripped me to shreds one time. It just kicked my ass. I was like, "Well, shit." But you know, we're both still amassing our collections. Yes. So you know. I really like the destruct. I really like the uh, undead side. So that's, we're playing that that's a lot. That's fun. Yeah. yeah, chaos will always be my main one, but I'm trying to get a, a playable deck in each of the four factions. Um, Slugger asked, uh, "Did you say Diablo 15? Season 15, yes, of yes. Uh, Diablo 3. Coming out. So I, I was told that this weekend was, uh, and probably last uh, Friday night. But my mom and dad were in town, so also I've totally lost track of uh, Diablo since I've been playing this card game. <laughs> and that is why I don't play certain games. <laughs> uh, well, if I wasn't playing this card game, I'd be playing Diablo, so yeah. Mm, I got a decent start on this model. I'll work on it. Um, guys, if you're going to be with me on Wednesday, I'll work on this some more. Um, awesome. Don't forget, Kathy is streaming Monday morning, 10 a.m. Central to 12 uh, on Monday and Thursday, um, Kathy, what are you going to work on? Do you know? Tomorrow? Yeah. I'm going to be working on the uh, the things I was working on on Thursday, which is uh, some models from the Mask of the Red Death board game. The Kickstarter version uh, is an exclusive thing that came with these models, and they're just vinyl. They're not like super high quality or anything but oh my god the artwork on them they're so fun to paint the bug king i stream right under uh, where you are right now so if you give us a follow uh at more than dice uh you'll get the notification when i go live streaming on monday mornings and thursday mornings yeah kathy streams under this i stream under this we stream under more than dice because we're a team yep so so I do my painting Mondays and Thursdays, 10 a.m. to noon Central. And Gonzo does his painting uh, on Wednesday night and some other times. Sometimes on Saturdays. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of Saturday morning cartoons. Yes. Sometimes on Saturdays when I'm not going to cons. Saturday or... morning cartoons anymore. Nope. It's, that's uh, why we paint. <laughs> that's why we paint. Uh, mine Shall is usually uh, Wednesdays 6 to 8. Uh, we used to do our RPG during that, but uh, one of them had to stop on Wednesday, so we do it on Tuesday, and we just record it. Um, what else? John, you possibly have a minis and movies this week? Uh, I'm going to try. I have to watch a movie okay. for it. So. Uh, we'll see how time goes for uh Should be able to make time for that this week. Okay. I think that's about it. Uh, we want to also say a shout out to our sponsors. We want to also thank uh, Broken Egg Games, who which does a really cool sponsor. Like guys, if you like our widgets, if you like widgets and tokens, uh, go to them. Uh, use the link that you find in the chat. Uh, they give us that's part of our deal with them. We get a small kickback from that. Also, uh, we have a uh, measurement set and a tournament set with our logo on it. Uh, there's on their website under the More Than Dice. Uh, all of that money from that goes directly to help support our podcast. Um, go there, buy it, please. Um, that helps us out a lot. Plus, you get some yes. really cool stuff. Because um, we plan on doing a lot of cool things coming up uh, with that money. 
Um, also, if you want to get other things, you want to support us a little bit at a time, you can go to Patreon. Patreon is going to have some cool things. We're getting that sorted out. Um, excuse me. Also, we want to thank Mechanica Studios. Uh, I'll be talking with Chris this weekend, and he is setting up some new stuff for us, getting ready. Um, giveaways, right? Yes. Giveaway, giveaway, giveaway. We'll be getting some giveaways for us, so hopefully that'll happen pretty soon. <laughs> And um, TikTok Craft Studios, Dan. 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 Dan's our buddy. We like him a lot. Um, he does awesome uh, MDF laser cut terrain. Yeah, Very nice guy. Some of that. Uh, I need to fill, keep filling out my terrain. Yes. Every Which, time I play, I realize I need to get a little bit more. If, and if you like our, if you like our content and you want to continue to see good content from us, we have a Patreon page. More than dice. Uh, look us up and uh, donate if you'd like to. Yep. Gift away now. Give it away now. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. All right. Other than that, guys, for more than dice, I'm Gonzo. I'm Kathy. Uh, I'm John. Look at that time, Kathy. Good <laughs> night. I'm on top of it. I definitely did not drink enough. I was painting way too much. Wait, are we done now? We're in our posts credit scene where okay. we can talk over stuff. I mean, you can listen to my airbrush here. No, thank you. Please, please, no. No. I drank <laughs> funny, but it was all half and half. It was all half oh, and half. I still have tea. Delicious I only had one Earl shot. Gray. I guess that's to make up for Saturday where I got home and had a very hostile drink, and I'm like, I'm not going out now because I really shouldn't. <laughs>